Before we get started with the lesson, we need to change our project a little bit. The new import and export syntax is next-gen JavaScript. Typically, we would use Babel to automatically convert next-gen code into current-gen code. But, to keep things simple, we're not going to set up Babel. Our project is just a simple folder on our system with an index.html file that imports our JavaScript file. We can add the type attribute to the import with a value of module, and that will enable the newer syntax. Modern JavaScript supports modular code. Of course, this isn't a new ES6 feature. In ES5, we could export a module with module.exports, then import that module with require. ES6 gives us more flexibility in how we import and export modules. There are two types of exports in modern JavaScript. Named and default exports. Named exports allow us to export code sections, like objects, functions or variables. To tell JavaScript we want to export something, we use the export keyword in front of its definition. Alternatively, we can explicitly export them at the bottom of the file, between curly braces. Now that we've exported some code, we can import it with the import keyword. Named imports are wrapped in curly braces and must use the same name as whatever we exported. We exported the greet function and the user object. Following that, we just need to specify from where we're importing it. Then, we can use the code we imported. We can also alias our names. To do that, we use name as alias. The other type of export is the default export, where we add the default keyword. We can only specify a single thing in the file to be the default. For any other exports, we have to use named ones. When we're explicitly exporting named and default exports, we specify default as the default exports alias. A benefit of the default export is that we can use any name we want when we're importing it. We also don't have to use the curly braces. If we have a named import as well, we can separate the two with a comma. The named import will still need to use the curly braces though. In the next video, we'll take a look at how to split objects and arrays, as well as how to merge function arguments. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again in the next one.